Ellis Rayner's boots crunched on the crimson sands of Drake and Fafor, each step kicking up clouds of dust that hung in the air, tinted with the blood-red hue of the dying star above. Ellis, his silhouette dwarfed by the towering form before him, stood his ground his very human vulnerability on display against the backdrop of an alien world. The draconian before him, a creature of legend, rose like a mountain, its scales shimmering with the unforgiving glare from the twin stars of the system. A clawed hand, each digit the size of Ellis's arm, curled slowly into a fist, a silent testament to the forthcoming reckoning. The draconian's eyes, deep pools of molten gold held no malice, only a solemn duty to the ancient codes of its kind. The humans had come with their dreams of progress encapsulated in steel and combustion, but they had awoken something far greater. The past, not as a memory, but as a living, breathing force. Ellis, who had once seen himself as the ambassador of a new era, now stood a supplicant at the altar of tradition. The Draconians, bound by honor etched into their very DNA, saw the disturbance of a sacred site, not as a mere transgression, but as a sin demanding atonement through blood. Ellis's heart raced, a drumbeat of anxiety that he struggled to quiet within the cavernous confines of his suit. The atmosphere on Draken IV was thick, a viscous air that clung to his lungs and tested the limits of his earth-born physiology. As the leader of the human mining operation, Ellis's role had unexpectedly morphed from that of a pioneer to a penitent, a shift that weighed heavily on his shoulders. His breath came in shallow drafts and his pulse throbbed in his temples, a symphony of human frailty. The Draconians had a civilization that stretched back eons, their honor code as unyielding as the bedrock from which it was hewn. To them, the human's infringement, the desecration of an ancestral tomb, was a sacrilege that could only be cleansed by the old ways. Ellis had never intended to become an expert in alien customs. His job was to oversee the extraction of precious minerals. Yet, here he was, fluent in the symphony of growls and gestures that comprise the draconian language, a language he had come to understand as well as his mother tongue. His dedication to their ways had been a labor of respect and necessity. It was this hard-earned knowledge that now stood as the only barrier between him and destruction. The High Council's decree had been succinct, a trial by combat, a ritual as ancient as the cliffs that framed the horizon. Ellis remembered the first time the council had presented the edict, a scroll inscribed with the sinuous script of the Draconians. The characters seemed to dance with a life of their own, each line a story, each curve a legacy. The weight of that moment had settled on Ellis's chest, a burden that had not lifted since. And so, Ellis found himself in the arena, an amphitheater gouged into the landscape by the relentless winds of time. He faced Goliath, the paragon of draconian strength, whose name was whispered with reverence and fear. The duel was a spectacle not intended to end in death, yet the disparity in power between man and draconian was such that fatality was but a misstep away. The battle commenced with Goliath's roar, a primal sound that seemed to shake the very planet. Ellis dodged a swipe that could have easily reduced him to a memory, relying on his honed reflexes to evade the crushing finality of Goliath's reach. The assembly of Draconians watched in silent awe. Never before had they seen a human dance with danger with such poise, such audacity. Ellis's gravity boots, a pinnacle of human ingenuity, hummed to life. With deft adjustments to their settings, he turned the very pull of the planet into an ally, each leap and bound a calculated defiance of the colossal force that faced him. The crowd's shock turned to curiosity, their collective whispers stirring the dust-laden air. Ellis's body screamed with the exertion of constant motion. Goliath, 
every inch the noble warrior struck with deliberate might, his every action a homage to the sanctity of combat. In the depths of those ancient eyes, Ellis saw a glimmer of respect, a recognition that transcended species. In a fleeting instant that would forever alter the course of history, Ellis chose humility over aggression. As Goliath's massive arm cut through the air, Ellis rooted himself to the spot, his boots anchoring him to the core of Drake in the Four. The Draconian halted, his fist an inch from Ellis's visor, the ground beneath them a testament to the power contained within that suspended blow. Silence fell over the arena. Ellis, with a slow, deliberate gesture, removed his helmet, revealing the sweat-soaked contours of his human face. He extended his hand, not in defiance but in fellowship. Goliath's eyes narrowed, the intensity of his gaze piercing through to the soul of the man before him. The crowd drew in a collective breath, the tension a tangible cloak that draped over the assembly. In a move that defied expectation, Goliath's massive hand opened, uncurling like the petals of some gargantuan flower. The draconian took a step back, inclining his head in a silent nod of respect. Ellis's voice, unamplified by the electronics of his helmet, carried across the sands, his words a bridge between worlds. We came here for resources, but I stand before you now to mine something far greater, understanding, peace, a future where human and draconian might share the stars. The draconians, a species where honor was currency, saw the wealth of Ellis's offering. A murmur spread through the ranks, growing in volume until it became a chant, a rhythmic cadence that embraced the human's words. Ellis, his chest tight with emotion, looked up at Goliath, whose stature seemed to soften, the lines of his form blending with the horizon. The High Council, perched on their ceremonial dais, exchanged glances, the weight of the moment settling upon them. It was the matriarch who stepped forward, her voice cutting across the noise. Let it be known that on this day, Ellis, reigner of Earth, has honored the codes of Drake and Four. Let it also be known that this human's courage has opened the path to a new accord, an accord that shall be inscribed in the annals of both our people. The matriarch's decree was the crescendo of a symphony that had begun with uncertainty and fear. Now its notes spoke of possibility and the dawn of an era where human and draconian might stand side by side. Ellis, in his act of calculated vulnerability, had gambled on the fundamental decency that existed within both of his kind and the draconians. His bet had paid off, not in the currency of minerals, but in the uncharted wealth of mutual respect. As the humans and draconians converged, the lines between them blurred. A handshake here, a shared glance there, each a thread weaving a tapestry of unity. Ellis, his eyes brimming with the promise of tomorrow, looked upon the scene, the gravity boots now silent at his feet. A quiet reminder that sometimes the greatest leap is the one taken without leaving the ground. The Goliath Accord, as it would come to be known, was not merely a treaty. It was a testament to the power of empathy. It was a declaration that swords could be sheathed, that common ground could be found and that even across the vast and starry expanse, understanding was the most precious resource of all. 